Hi everyone and welcome to today's Connect and Learn webinar. It's great to have you with us um, today and my name is Sandra Rogue and I'll be hosting the session. Today's session is uh, titled Online Communities for AOD Recovery. But before I continue, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land we are gathered, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nations and pay respects to Elders past, present and emerging and extend this respect to peoples from all Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Islander communities. Um, this webinar, you might already know this, but if you're new to the webinars, this is part of a series of 10 Connect and Learn webinars designed to support the alcohol and drug clinicians throughout regional and metropolitan Victoria, funded by the Department of Health and Human Services and hosted by Turning Point. Some good news, these webinars have been funded again for 2020, so another 10 webinars will be offered in that year. To make the webinars as interactive as possible, uh, just a reminder to use the functions in the top right of your screen to complete any polls that will come up within the presentation and ask any questions at any time throughout the webinar. Part of my role will be to collate the comments and the feedback and the questions that come through from you and there'll be some time at the end for you to, and for the facilitator, Brittany, to respond to those questions. We really encourage you to stay to the end of the webinar and complete the exit survey, as this is an opportunity for you to provide us with some feedback and make any suggestions on, to on topics that you'd like for future webinars. However, if you, you can't make it and you have to leave early, there is an opportunity to complete the, su the survey early as well. Um, it is with great pleasure that uh, I introduce our, our presenter to this webinar, uh, Brittany Pintano. Brittany is the Online Community Development Officer at Turning Point. She manages two recovery-oriented line communities, oriented online communities, one in the gambling and one in the alcohol and other drug space, and brings uh, her background she brings to this as a public health background. Brittany is, a car is also currently the co-secretary of the Australian Support Communities Interagency, which is a collaborative group for community managers of psychosocial peer support communities. And she's very passionate and very excited about the growth and development of this additional support for people in the process of change to their alcohol and drug use. So I'd like to welcome Brittany and I really hope that you enjoy this webinar as much as we've enjoyed putting it together for you. So over to you, Brittany. Great. Thank you, Sandra. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here today and for this presentation about a new and exciting type of service provision. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here and to do this and to share with you all. And I hope to get you all just as excited about it as I am, if you're not already. So as mentioned, I do run two online communities in my work at Turning Point. Uh, one is in the gambling and one is in the AOD space, and it's a field that I'm really excited about. In today's presentation, I will predominantly focus on the alcohol and drug service, which is the counselling online forums that we have um, in covering my topics. So I'll be sharing general information with you about what online communities are, the growth of them in recent years, particularly in the health space, um, and the ways that online communities can be beneficial for people regardless of their topics. I chat about how online support can complement as well as address some gaps in traditional face-to-face -face AOD service. And then I'll jump into the juicy details about how counselling online forums work, uh, the clinical context, the intention of the service, who it's suitable for, um, before taking you through the benefits of these types of services and what we're already seeing. And then finally, what we're hoping uh, we'll be able to provide for people in the future with this service. So before we do that, I just want to get a gauge of who we've got in the audience. So we've got a poll. Uh, just So how many of you currently recommend online communities for people that they are working with? So we've got sometimes, never, sorry, never, sometimes, and consistently. All right, we've got some coming in. I might wait a second in case there's any more. Okay. So we've got generally as a sometimes. So I do hope to boost this through today's presentation. Oh, we've got some more.
What do you think? Yes. Okay. So, a bit of a mix there. So that's great. Um, thank you for being curious enough to be here. Um, I hope that uh, by the end of this we can get that boost up. But that's really good to know a general idea of who's watching today. Um, so. Counseling Online is a national, federally funded um, text-based support that we have. It's operated by Turning Point. Uh, it's for people concerned about their own use as well as impacted friends and family. So the suite of services we have there, it includes chat counseling, email counseling, SMS support, self-assessments and self-help tips, um, as well as, as of recent, the online community forums. The online community forums launched in late January of this year, um, and it's for peers to support one another and in making change, as well as support between affected friends and family. The key objectives of the service are for peers to share hope, um, motivation and encouragement, as well as tips, strategies and ideas, and as well to provide a space for therapeutic story sharing in a safe, uh, anonymous environment for mutual aid. I will go into this a bit more, but first let's just take a step back and talk about online communities. So some examples here. Um, so online communities have been around for decades. Um, they're also known as forums or discussion boards, and for many people they bring a really old nostalgic kind of circuit internet 1.0 um, of beauty or house renovations, um, uh, a lot of gaming forums, things like that. Um, but as the internet's evolved, so have these communities in, and there are now innumerable. One notable growth is the major increase in the number and the use of health online communities with people continuing to take to online spaces to support and, support and advice around their experiences. As generations grow up, this will only continue to rise. Uh, clinically based online communities um, operated by health services are a hugely growing field that we're seeing. Here in Australia, we have some of the world leading online communities in this space. So some examples that you've got there and include Beyond Blue, the Reach Out Forums, Cancer Council, SANE Australia, but there are a lot more as well. So we work there are mental health or complex mental health. There, Cancer Council does cancer in general, but there are also specialised. There's ovarian cancer, breast cancer network, uh, prostate cancer network. There are innumerable fantastic supports. Um, all of us, <clears throat> as community managers, all of us work quite closely together in this largely new landscape. Um, to support one another in developing these spaces to provide the best quality care that we can um, and these uh, safe and welcoming environments and really trying to forge forward with the, ind the, with the best practice. So one aspect that all of these communities address is um, loneliness, the rate of which we know the stats are telling us continues to rise here in Australia. So. There we've got, in 2018, the Australian Psychological Society's results showed that one in four Australians are lonely and one in four Australians experience high levels of social interaction anxiety. These factors are closely related to poorer psychological well-being, poorer quality of life, feelings of being a burden, a lack of confidence, and a lower sense of um, felt capacity to deal with problems. And this affects people's likelihood to seek support and in the AOD space to, to feel that they can make and maintain change. Other benefits that we know that people experience from online health communities include freedom from physical barriers of accessing treatment, so time availability or geographical um, geographical location, especially here in Australia with so many regional um, based people. Anonymity, so through moderation we ensure that people remain anonymous so that they can feel as safe as possible to be truly honest in this area um, without concern for implications or shame and stigma. The non-committal type of service that it is so people can test the waters in what they're doing and float in and out perhaps in, in accessing support as feels appropriate for them at the time. 
There are no costs involved in accessing these types of support except the need to, uh, for a device and internet. And it's also helpful for people who experience maybe social concerns or anxiety. The other great benefit of these is that they become a great stockpile of information. So as um, over the years, as more and more posts come together, th that information is searchable for people to look back on whenever they require. So we have search functionality available in our forums, which allows people to search whatever they might be concerned about at the time and read through years of information and experiences of people who understand what they're feeling. So um, that might be in including sort of treatment options they might be considering or symptoms that they're experiencing, um, concerns or social concerns or um, anything and really get the real life experience of people who uh, who have been through that and see the kind of discussion that goes around that. The other thing is that our forum is by no means the first service um, for online peer support in the AOD space. So here in Australia, we have the smart recovery meetings. They work not exclusively with AOD, but they do work with AOD problematic behavior. Uh, Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous have online spaces. I believe it's predominantly meetings, but they do have online spaces. Um, there are a number of pilot programs that have been really successful. I know um, in regional Victoria recently, there was one where people awaiting justice court dates used an online app for uh, supporting them in their recovery. And part of that includes like a closed peer group. And they got some really great results from that. And the other thing is, it's the internet. There are a lot of consumer-driven support that's going, seeing really great results as well. So Reddit's Stop Drinking subreddit has over 200,000 members globally. And Blue Light is also, it's a harm reduction space that focuses on drug education, but they also do have uh, recovery-focused forums within it. The list goes on, and there are a lot of... Um, a lot of them out there, they all operate sort of with varying intentions, varying styles and audiences, but they do demonstrate the major increase in recent years of people going online to seek support. So before we go any further, I do just want to briefly touch on, I am using the word recovery. Um, it's a somewhat contentious kind of word, I believe, in some, for some, and there are a lot of different schools of thought and connotations on this word um, and a variety of interpretations. So our service recognises 100% that um, everyone's goals are different and that harm minimisation is crucial for all. As mentioned, there are a number of different online platforms out there and our service is designed for a particular pocket, so where change use and staying stopped is the intention. That's in no way intended um, to take away from different intended services of pe or intentions of services or people. Uh, it's a matter of us sort of identifying the pocket within which that we fall and fully recognizing that that may not resonate with certain people at different times. So why online in AOD? The online nature of the service assists us to reach an audience for which other services may not be currently suitable um, and move beyond service access barriers for some. So these are in many cases similar to the benefits I was talking about with online communities, but in this case I'm comparing online alcohol and drug support in comparison to face-to-face -face alcohol and drug support. So these include, but are not exclusive to time, so counselling online, I mentioned we've got the chat email, I'm uh, sorry, chat counselling. Um, that's available 24-7 and our forum posts are available for people to read through 24-7. Currently in its uh, early stages, we moderate the content between 9am and 9pm for reasons that I'll touch on a little bit further. But anyone can always post, it's just that the post will sit through until the morning when it's read through. Um, and our, sorry, Counseling Online service usage data shows that over two thirds of the people accessing our services do so outside of official uh, hours. So there are kind of two interpretations you could apply to this. One is that people may be in treatment and looking for additional treatment um, outside of those hours when their treatment is not available. So their you know, service isn't available, so just sort of alongside what they might be seeking otherwise and the other is that um, 
people due to due to time commitments may not be able to um, get to treatments. You know, can't make it to certain appointments in the in the hours available. The reality is it's probably a, a bit of a combination of this as well as some other factors, but I would say it's a combination of these two, the timing. It's approachable. So for some people, face-to-face -face treatment is really intimidating. Having someone in front of them asking what can be some pretty challenging questions, um, which they feel the need to respond to straight away, um, can be really difficult and in some cases lead to dishonesty as well um, and anxiety around that. Um, and for many, they also feel the same about face-to-face -face peer support. So with online support, it allows for people to take the time to consider their responses, be in an environment where they feel comfortable um, and at a time when they might feel it might be suitable for them. Um, so in that case, I mean, the benefits already begin um, when they begin to reflect on what they'd like to construct, how they'd like to talk about their goals, what they're going through, their experiences. Um, and this is particularly um, beneficial for people in the early stages of change who might be wanting to test the waters or never access treatment before. Um, and then the other thing is flexibility. So many of us understand that recovery is not linear. Um, many move between stages of change and accessing treatment over years, if not decades. And Online support allows for people to reach out at times where they might really be motivated for change or really eager for support and not need to face what can be some quite really long waiting times and trying to maintain motivation in that period. Uh, online support also means that we're able to access um, as well, accessible for um, sort of untraditional uh, groups. So the kind of groups that we see, we see uh, predominantly younger people, family members and women. So this is quite a flip on what we see in traditional face-to-face -face alcohol and drug service. Um, and this is believed to be due to the anonymity available of this, as well as um, overcoming barriers such as daytime childcare perhaps, or working commitments, um, and geographic barriers of course, and stigma as well. Okay, so now I will go on to our services in particular. So as I previously touched on, Counseling Online is not the first online community that Turning Point has developed and operates. We also have the Gambling Help Online community for those making change in their gambling and have impacted friends and family. So you're able to see this forum uh, by going to gamblinghelponline.org.au and on the home screen there's an online forums button along the top um, and then it will land on this forum that you're seeing. The other thing is I've hyperlinked this so if you download my slides at the end it's all in there as well. Um, so the Gambling Help Online community I love. <laughs> We've been operating it for over six years now. It's a really supportive, healthy community um, of people all over Australia. We have members at all stages of their journey, um, from their first time seeking support to people gamble free for many years, um, and it just continues to grow. We've been able to apply our experiences from having this community to launching of the new alcohol and drug community. So I will use some examples as we go into the types of support we see in this space. I'll use some examples from the gambling one as well as our alcohol and drug one. And the reason for this is just that um, because it's been operating for longer, it is at a different stage of maturity and we see a lot of great um, support there, which we intend and hope we will also be moving towards in the alcohol and drug one. Um, and the other reason is simply because it really is a lovely space. There's some peers there doing some really great things for one another and maybe I'm biased, but I think it's really great and I hope that I can sort of do that justice and show that. So the Counseling Online forums, our Counseling Online community, um, they've been live now for almost 10 months, which is a short time in the online community world, hence the baby. Um, and um, it's been a really enjoyable experience so far. Um, both we as the providers and the members and service continues to evolve, but it's been a really great year so far. 
And the community is all about social support, so soft support, social capital, um, uh, connectedness on people's journeys. What we're really working to create is a connected community, where a place where people can share their experiences and feelings with no concern or experience of shame, judgment or stigma. Um, something we know is a major concern for people when accessing support for problems they're concerned about. And it is important to note that it's in no way designed to replace treatment or medical support for people, only to complement it. So we ensure we communi sorry, communicate this as clear as possible with members. Um, the forum's not a crisis or a counselling service. Um, we will always recommend these services to people whenever we feel that it's appropriate, um, but I'll touch on that process a little bit soon. So this is the homepage of Counselling Online, counsellingonline.org.au. Again, it's hyperlinked for you. Um, so there's that online forums button there. So once you go through to the forums, we have, we've kept it as simple as possible. We want it to just be an approachable, simple process for people. We've got four sections. It's information about what, what our forum is, the kind of philosophy, intention, as well as community guidelines that we have. There's an area for change makers. That's people wanting to change or maintain change. Friends and family of, you know, self-explanatory, as well as a community space where we have shared topics or um, sort of announcements from, from our team, but predominantly as community topics and community activities that we run. So the kinds of content and discussion that we have, of course, the main intention is for us to provide a space for peers to communicate with one another. And so we work to not overwhelm the space as much as we can, but this will be more and more possible as the community grows and is more and more self-sustaining. So we put prompts in to start dialogues. So there's a couple of examples there. When did you recognize that you had a problem? This is a long-standing thread where we have members sort of reflecting on things. When, when was it that I started to really be concerned about this? And activities to do instead of drinking or using. And I think this is a really great thread. This is a long-standing one that lots of people participate in and they just share it can be big or small things or, you know, have you seen this online course or I went for a run or, you know, uh, we had someone asking, oh, I'm thinking about taking up jogging. Has anyone got experience with this? I think it might be a nice distraction for me. Just sharing ideas or recipes or anything, you know. For some people, having a distraction, having something else to think about is really beneficial for them. Um, and the other thing is we've also recently introduced a, a topic series fortnightly called Let's Talk. Um, we provide information on topics and a list a number of relevant resources for people. And then we prompt discussion between members. So this style of content allows us to provide some information for people and to promote some dialogue, but without overwhelming the space of their sort of personal threads as much as we can. We do look at um, a holistic and well-being focused um, look at health, I guess. Um, we welcome members to talk about anything that they might be experiencing at the time um, and things going on for them outside of their drinking or their use. Um, recognizing that uh, issues that are issues other than this that people are experiencing in their lives are near impossible to disentangle and and that, um, they shouldn't need to, and that working on other concerns in people's lives will ultimately, potentially, and probably hopefully assist in them achieving their sort of recovery goals. Now, we also run Q&As where people can, uh, where our members can ask guests, um, special guests, um, questions about certain topics where we're seeing maybe a knowledge gap. So identifying those through a lot of questions that might be coming through on the forums, but also through our other lines that we operate. Um, so here's an example of a Q&A that we had. This one was um, things that get in people's ways of accessing formal support um, and guidance on ways to get past this, which we ran with Shannon Bowman, an alcohol and drug counsellor. It gave people an opportunity to raise anything that, um, that got in their way of accessing treatment. So we saw people bringing up physical as well as mental barriers um, and also talking about previous bad experiences with support that they may have had. 
And Shannon was able to encourage them on alternative pathways or to uh, encourage them to try multiple service providers and see what resonated with them. Um, we do work to make sure that these answers aren't individual but more general because we know that you know for every one person that might submit a question it might be a hundred people who had the same question so trying to make it as general um, and um, helpful for as many people as possible is what we do um, so i've put here an example that you can see there so this person submitted living in a smaller community feeling like i don't really have any anonymity Difficult to be honest with my GP. I also worry I will be able, I will be put on antidepressants, which I'm not keen on, and the greater implication. If being on antidepressants or admit my alcohol usage, I have heard it may impact my life insurance. So it's a great way for people to bring up things that they might be concerned about, but never really have another forum, forum to put that into. So it's really interesting to see uh, what comes through and to be able to provide that space for people. Um, and another example is uh, we had one on prescription medications with Al Brown, who is a nurse as well as a safe script counsellor, support counsellor, um, where she answered a number of questions for people about misuse implications of prescription medications, uh, withdrawal process and available support for them. So an example there as well is unfortunately I believe I had a withdrawal which caused a one-off violent outburst and caused depression symptoms. So this was someone who was on um, prescribed usage of medication and without medical support had taken themselves off it. Um, so this provided our uh, opportunity to talk to that person about the need to get medical support in these actions and that perhaps if the GP they were working with it wasn't working well for them to look around and see if there was anyone else that they could sort of work on some trusting relationship with and also to share that information in general with people the need and the necessity for medical support in making these changes. So the dedicated friends and family section is self-explanatory that's for people who are impacted by the use or drinking of another uh, but while these, while people using this area often want to talk about the people they're concerned which, with, which absolutely makes sense, we also try to encourage them to consider the ways it may be impacting them and any sort of support or sort of self-care that they might need to be doing, some reflecting on how it's impacting them. And then for those making change, there are benefits for people really at all stages of change and all stages of their journey. So members come to test the waters and to sort of try out getting some support, see if they're ready to get some support in making change, uh, some bridging support while they're waiting for appointments, and also between appointments and alongside treatment. We see this quite often just to complement the treatment as more of a round the clock and, and the peer support style. And then aftercare and support in staying stopped and then those wanting to give back, those who are perhaps further down on their journey and, and want to give back to the people uh, who might be earlier in their change. So the informal nature of the service inherently provides space for this, but we also aim to make the forum a place that people really feel connected to, that even on the days that they don't particularly want to discuss maybe their alcohol and drug concerns, because if it's a place that people want to, people want to go to and they want to chat to their forum friends, then perhaps on the days where uh, they're feeling less motivated or if, they're experienced, if they've experienced a lapse or, um, yeah, motivation is kind of wavering, then the sooner that they can come back and maybe be encouraged and chat to other like-minded people, then hopefully uh, the sooner they can move forward. So how does it work? At Turning Point... We have the alcohol and drug uh, coordinator, that's Daryl Jones, and he's the head of the project as well as the clinical lead. And then I am, as mentioned, the community manager. So it's a, both an online and an offline role. In offline world, it's things like this, spreading the good word, um, as well as making sure that we're keeping up with best practice and doing the best sort of process that we can and supporting the most varying communities that we can. And then in the online world, it means building relationships with members, uh, seeding discussions, uh, and supporting the moderation process as well. Our alcohol and drug counsellors at Turning Point are the facilitators on the service. 
which means that they both moderate posts looking at things like risk mitigation as well as facilitating discussion between the members. There are about 20 of them which work on this and um, with a number of us on the service, it's a great team and it, it provides a way that we can all reflect and discuss and talk about queries and how we can be doing things the best we're doing but are also getting clinical support. So there's a photo on the screen of our, of our work environment. It's an open plan office and it means that people can just turn to the person next to them and, oh, what do you think about this and get some, some conversation there. Um, and we also have supervisors available 24-7, so um, for guidance as well as debriefing for our counsellors with on-call also available 24-7 around the clock um, where there's not a clinical supervisor on the floor at the time. So going into clinical governance, governance there are guidelines like I mentioned that we ask members to adhere to. Um, while we recognise that everyone's experience is different and everyone's goals and urges are different as well, um, we work to minimise the triggers as much as we can for as many people as we can. As such, there are some things that we ask people to avoid talking about um, in very specific terms and instead ask them to use more general kind of phrases where possible. So some examples, well, what these are, are substance quantities, so instead using um, phrases such as some rather than talking about really specific measurements. Brandings of alcohol, so beer, wine and spirit, no worries, but once we get into brandings it's a bit of a different kind of dialogue. Um, specific drugs, so um, this means, so when we're talking about prescription medications or medication things, classes is fine, so asking that people use benzos but not brandings, so Xanax. And then with other kinds of drugs, so for example, weed is great, it's a general term, but once you go down the, the, the conversations about strains, it's a bit of a different type of dialogue. Um, and then there are other things, um, oh sorry, description methods of consumption as well. So instead, you know, general phrases, took, used, had. And then there are other non-alcohol and drug related um, guidelines which are more just designed to keep the community as conducive as possible, a, a safe environment, a great environment for people to be in. So anonymity, as I mentioned, is a really big one and it's important for us that it be so that people feel that they can be as honest as, as, um, as possible. Um, so things like first names and cities is not a problem. but. The exchanging of um, details or full names and things is um, not something that we allow in the space. Um, it's worth noting there as well, so we, it, there's no functionality in the forum for members to privately communicate with one another. It's only for on in the threads to publicly communicate for a number of reasons um, and we also don't um, allow for content to be shared which is personal details to then take it to other spaces. Um, respectful and supportive is a straightforward one, you know, no harassment, no bullying and no shaming. Um, it's a peer space so we don't allow commercial activity or as well um, no uh, professional advice as well. We don't allow um, what may be seen as professional advice in the space um, and no defaming of services. So we don't allow people to talk negatively about name services or um, which might disencourage people from accessing support. There are some other uh, concerns that we address, so um, suicidality is something that we work with quite consistently and um, the belief is that it might just be that people have a little bit more confidence in an online sort of environment. Um, there's some really great research um, in this space which I'll be happy to share, but one key one is Anthony McCosker did some work for Beyond Blue. Um, which discusses how beneficial it is um, and important it is to provide a space for people to be able to talk about these feelings and experiences. Um, and it also debunks some ideas around how this content can be dangerously triggering for other people to read. So we recognise this work by allowing people to talk about suicidal concerns, suicidal feelings um, and to seek support from their f peers. Um, but Obviously we also um, risk mitigate, so we'll be making contact offline, in email, doing check-ins and where we feel that it's necessary we will escalate that. Um, but we do draw the line in terms of the posts 
um, content um, when it gets to graphic material or talking about methods of, of harm or of suicide. Um, another is the need for medical support with people with withdrawal, so we will always flag that where necessary. Um, and the other is posting postings which s celebrate use in any way. So again, this links back to the discussion. Everyone's journeys are different and we 100% recognise that, but, but we also recognise the pocket that we sit in and our intention with the space for people. Um, and we we don't allow for posts which um, talk about the positive experiences of, of using. Um, it's just not conducive with what we're doing, I guess. So um, we do acknowledge that these guidelines will, may, probably will shift in some ways and continue to evolve. And some of them already have in some ways. It's just we continue to reflect and make sure that we're doing the best that we can do for people and providing the best environment that we can. So, like I said, we moderate between 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. Um, at this stage, just as while the community is still evolving its own culture, it really is the thing there. So it means that when people first post, it's first seen by one of our counsellors, the facilitators, just to ensure mainly the safety of the content against what I was just talking about. And then uh, it's made live as soon as possible um, between the hours. So. In comparison, our gambling forum is in post moderation, which basically means that posts go live and then our counsellors look, look at the content each day and then um, remove content that's of concern. Um, there are pros and cons to each style, but um, basically as soon as the counselling online forum is of a stage of maturity and a culture that we're confident in the safety for people with, then we will switch over to this post-moderation style as it will enable more flow in discussion for people. Uh, so I've got there some pictures as well. So the one on the left is what people see when they contribute a post and basically says, yes, we've got your post. It's just got to be checked first and then we'll notify you as soon as it's gone live. And then right is just to give you an idea of what our moderators see. So there's the example of the content and then they'll approve it or otherwise there. So. When posts come to us, um, the facilitators read it and, and select whether or not it should go live. If there is an issue with a post, all of the communication that we do with a member is done privately through email. So we will email the member and explain why there was an issue with their post, why it couldn't go live. Um, we do this as lightly as possible. We really don't want to disencourage people from engaging with the service, but we also need to balance that with managing the triggers of other people reading. It could be thousands of people, you know, and once a post is live, as I said, it's catalogued for years to come. So we need to consider everybody in these kinds of actions. But we really want to empower people. So we'll never edit the post for them. What we will do is once we explain sort of um, the reasoning, we'll then offer them a suggested rephrase that might be more conducive, um, but relating to what they're saying, just so that they can repost and get that live as soon as possible and chatting with their peers when they can. So, <laughs> so community, uh, as I said, it's all about peer support and that's really important to us. Um, and in doing so, we, we are really clear on what we do and what we don't do. Um, so what we do, we maintain a safe, conducive environment. Um, we build connection and also look out for risk. But we don't counsel people. We don't um, provide individual references for them. Um, but uh, we use motivational interviewing techniques to ask questions, to lead discussions and to use engaging topics to assist people in some activity in the forum. We don't currently have formal roles um, for peers in the community, um, maybe community champions or super users, these types of, of names, uh, but it is something that we'll be prioritising in the future. So it won't be a clinical role, it will just be a step towards it being more and more of a peer space. There will be peers that um, communicate, they welcome other members, they see discussions and also provide us feedback in what we're doing and, and how we can best, best provide the space. Um, but in saying that, I do think something that's really beautiful about it is the fluidity that people can 
move between seeking as well as providing um, support for other people and that will be something that we will have to really consider when we create these roles in making sure that we can still protect that fluidity for people. Um, before I jump into the benefits just now, I just want to say that um, uh, <laughs> Um, we don't uh, there are a lot of people that don't necessarily post, definitely, they read through, there's, you know, it's only a small percentage actually um, of people who actually post in the communities in comparison to those who read through. Historically we've called them lurkers, I think we don't really try to use that anymore, it's a bit of a creepy term nowadays, I think it's consumers, so we'll go with that. But there is a body of evidence that says that um, many of the benefits of communities that um, people experience, um, their experience similarly, if not equally, um, by those who post and who do not, um, those who do not, those who consume. So um, I think this is really important for people to consider when you're maybe thinking about who you might recommend the service to um, if you're working with people, um, because while they may not be likely to post or if writing isn't something that's a natural expression for them, there is still a lot of benefit that can come for them just by knowing that the service is there and reading about other people's experience. Okay, this is my favorite bit. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna go through what the benefits are and what we're seeing um, already. And like I said, there are some examples here from the Gambling Forum, but the majority are from the Alcohol and Drug Forum. Um, I, I, I get the warm and fuzzies in my job. I love seeing um, all the posts, the beautiful posts that people share between one another. There are definitely, of course, tough times for people and tough posts as well, but I love seeing the rallying and the experience that people get in this space. And I've used some examples um, here when I'm going through this, and I just hope that it does it justice. Um, but, you know, as I said, you guys can read through. It's anybody can read through any time. You just have to be registered to post. So I recommend, if you know, go have a look, check it out. Um, but so benefits, hope. I think hope is a major thing in what we do. Um, just being able to see other people's stories. Oh, you know, I don't feel like I can get through one day. That person, look, they hit seven days. Oh, a month. Oh, a year. You know, just knowing people like me can do it. Um, motivation. So there's a quote there. I encourage you all to not give up the fight. Don't doubt your ability to stop. Stay true to yourself. This was a person who was really excited. They just reached a personal milestone and they were so excited and they wanted to encourage other people, you know. Um, freedom from judgment. It helps a lot to know that there will be no judgment, only support. I'm glad I found you guys as I don't have anyone I can confide in. Support, I mean, this is obvious. There's a lot of, I've said support a thousand times maybe, but um, I, I just think it's a really important aspect of what we do. So a couple of examples, it won't come easy. Nothing in life is, but everything in life is accomplishable. Sometimes it's all you need to help you push through the bad times. This was someone who had been using the forum the whole time through their recovery and hit a milestone. And again, they wanted to thank the other members. This was, thank you so much for all your posts. You really helped me. So much support from everyone along the way, you actually feel like you can overcome this terrible demon. Sense that you're not alone. I think this is another one as well that really we see come up a lot. So um, my favorite quote there is, this is a really hard road we're traveling down and hearing other people in the same situation is strangely helpful. Um, and the other, it's really easy to imagine that I'm the only person accountability as well so um, traveling well maybe being accountable to something other than inside my own head is being helpful I have not drank at home therapeutic story sharing so um, including cre creativity such as poems or people can upload photos I haven't seen it yet but I'm hoping it'll happen that people can put up photos of maybe their artwork um, journey tracking of course people can look back on their posts that they were posting weeks, months, years ago. You know, I think that's really powerful stuff to see how far people have come. Sharing ideas, strategies and tips. This is a key one, of course, um, but just some examples there. So feeling better but slow and tired. Has anyone else had this problem? This was someone who was on a methadone program and just wanted to, they were just experiencing a bit of sluggishness in that and wanted to know if anyone else has had that kind of experience. And the other was a person talking about putting up 
self-care strategies on their fridge because they knew that when the cravings hit, my brain doesn't work anymore. And another really major powerful thing that is great in the peer space is encouraging one another to seek support and um, treatment and counselling. So uh, rehab works. It may have taken a few. It may take a few times, but it works. Really encouraging you to try it. Um, and uh, contact someone from this site and they will put you in contact with someone who can help. It may be our choice to stop gambling, but that doesn't mean we have to do it alone. Um, the, and we also see that encouraging people to go back to treatment if they've had a bad experience, encouraging one another. No, I had a really great one. Keep trying, keep trying. It's great. So the story so far. Uh, it's very early days, but the story so far is a really nice one. We've worked to create solid foundations for a safe and conducive and valuable online experience for people. It's growing and it's changing. Uh, we're seeing people at all stages of their journey and with varying primary um, substances of concern. At the moment, it's primarily early stages of change that we're seeing, um, but we're really working to change this. To maximise value, we really uh, we want to have value for everybody at all stages, but also for them to be able to help one another. We kind of need people at, at, with different experiences. Um, so what we know from gambling community is that that can be a matter of time. So we see people who are sort of now years gamble free, who've been using the forum since they started, who now want to give back to people, and that's really great. So that can also be a matter of time. Some popular topics that we see is how to maintain motivation or how to broach topics with loved ones. Or, um, you know, how can I possibly tell them that I've lapsed? Or, you know, do you have any tips? Or uh, also the other way, I'm worried that someone in my life is lying to me. What do you think? Um, and then socialising. A perfect example is someone recently asked, oh, how do I say no when people offer me a drink? And there was a great conversation about, you know, it depends where you're at, but do you want to make a joke about it? You don't want to see me when I drink. I, I don't like who I am when I drink. Or order a soda and lime and don't tell people you don't need to, you know. And just everyone's different and giving so different options. But it was great dialogue around there. And we're also talking to different organisations. And I'm really open to chatting with any of you about how we can continue to increase the value for people um, with really varying client groups. It's really important to us. But we really aim to be the most valuable tool that we can be for anyone with concerns relating to alcohol and drug. So this includes wanting to be part of standard recommendations for people at all stages. So people may be calling for support who perhaps aren't quite ready for treatment to people exiting treatment and everything in between. And I've just got there some key takeaways. So. If you're a clinician watching this and you are wondering how you can assist people in accessing the service to the forum, a couple of key notes there. So there are benefits to people at all stages, including maybe those who may not want to be posting, just to read through. Um, they will need access to a device and internet um, and also an email address. So it might be worth um, assisting them in giving them information about how to get um, to a library or how to set up an email address. Um, and I also think it might be beneficial just to brief them on kind of the guidelines and the moderation practice. Uh, we will gently coach them through this as well on our end, but those first sort of experiences with a community can really be make or break in whether they continue to access it in the future. So just managing those expectations is really beneficial. Okay, so we need to launch the next poll. So I've got another poll. So, do I need to press anything? Just ask Jason okay. to launch. Cool. Yep. <laughs> so, how many of you will now recommend online communities for people that they're working with? I'm hoping we've had a bit of a shift. So, I still have some questions, or sometimes, or definitely. Thinking. Thinking. Ooh, yep. Great. Oh, look at that. Definitely. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, I'm really glad. Um, I'm really glad that you guys were curious about this and hearing about something that's quite new. I'm really glad there's been a bit of a shift. Um, so I've got my email address here, and anyone's welcome to reach out to me anytime. Um, please don't hesitate. Um, we're going to go through some questions that are open, but 
As I said, I'm not the clinical lead on the service. So if there is anything that I can't answer, we'll definitely circulate it and we'll get some answers to you via email. Um, and that basically wraps me up. Um, so if anyone, the other thing is I can share any of my references. And with all those people with all their big shift in promotion, if you can reach out <laughs> to me there and we've got posters and brochures and stuff that you can put up in your services um, for both. So the counseling online as well as the gambling. So that's my quick plug. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. Before we go to the any exit survey, so I'll just go back oh, for sorry. a tick. That's okay. Thank you. That <laughs> thank was you. that was wonderful. Uh, there have been a couple of questions uh, that have come through from the audience. So thank you very much for staying on board and asking really important questions. This one here <coughs> says um, this person's wanting to know. Um, I understand the need for restricting contact with the forum. However, would you ever consider organising face-to-face meeting groups for clients who use the forum, and would like more support? That's a really great question. Um, at this stage, no, basically because it's not what we're funded to do, So, um, and especially because we're national. But I think it's a great thought, um, but it's just not something that we have the resourcing to support at this stage. I hope that answers That's that. That's a good question. Mm. Um, another question is, so how do you, um, how do you advertise or promote this generally? Oh uh, yeah, so we, um, so Turning Point is based in Victoria, so we have a lot more links in Victoria and we do things like um, VADA e-newsletter um, and as well working on, um, we're, you know, getting posters out there and trying to get into intake services as well as support services. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Um, but the other thing is like we're really focused on trying to get national as well because especially working, trying to re reach those sort of regional and remote areas we're really focusing on how we can get remote so on a from a recommendation level that means getting to clinicians getting a conference presence things like this mm -hmm. um, but also advertising online so that you know people who are not already accessing mm. support in some way um, reaching them that way mm. thank you thank you um, I'm just I'm, I'm I'm very excited for this service <laughs> I think this is great this is a thank wonderful you. development in our sector um, it's wonderful to see women who are not traditionally accessing yeah. services as often that yeah. they're linking in with the forums. I think your presentation, uh, you do demonstrate all of that wonderful enthusiasm, so well <laughs> done to you. Thank you. Um, I'd like to let, let people know uh, who've been watching um, the webinar that Brittany's slides are available via PDF, so you can, you can access those from the website. This webinar will go up online onto the Turning Point website as soon as possible. And I just want to say a bit of a shout out to all the webinar team. It's been a big year, so very much thank you for all of our presenters and everyone who's been involved, and that we are um, in preparation for developing the next 10 uh, webinars for 2020. 2020. Um, and so if you've, as I say, if anyone's got any interest areas or any suggestions, please let us know and we'd be happy to consider those. So I think we're just about done, but before you go, please um, take the opportunity to complete the exit set, um, web, uh, sorry, survey and, uh, and please provide as much information as you, as you feel you can. And look out for our webinars in 2020 on the VADA e-news. So thank you very much and we'll see you in the new year. Yeah, thanks so much. Thank you. <laughs>